this video, we'll cover how to use the Trajectory Aimer 2D Asset. After importing the asset from the Unity Asset Store, you can check out one of the two demo scenes here and here. I'll be using the basketball demo scene in this tutorial, but first I'm going to delete the Trajectory Aim and Projectile prefabs so we can start this tutorial off from the top. The first step is to add the Trajectory Aim and Projectile prefabs to the scene. And that's really the only step. Everything else is about customizing the asset to match your style. If we press play, we can see that it works. The collision detection also works right from the start, but it could be a lot better. Let's see how. First of all, the projectile is floating around like it's on the moon. I'm going to exit play mode to increase the gravity scale of the projectile to 5. You can change it to whatever you like. That feels a lot better. Now let's make the projectile look like a basketball. Let's assign the basketball sprite to the projectile. And let's also make it orange. I'm also going to make the projectile a little bigger and set its scale to 2. Nice. But the projectile needs to be behind the net. As we can see here, it's coming in front of the net. So let's exit play mode and let's set the order and layer of the projectile to 0 so it can be behind the net. Nice. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. The trajectory aim settings. I'm going to spread the dots out a little bit. And I'm going to add one more dot. I'll also increase the dot size to 0 0.8. And I think it will be cool if the gradient were black. Nice. The collision indicator is kind of weird though. I could change the collision indicator sprite and color to match the basketball manually, but I'm kind of lazy, so I'll copy the projectile sprite renderer component like this, and I'll go over to the collision indicator and paste it there like this. I'll also make it a little more transparent increase its scale to match the projectiles and increase its order and layer so it's above everything. I want your opinion. Would you rather see the collision indicator sprite in color settings right here in the trajectory aim inspector or would you rather the inspector be less crowded but have to go to the collision indicator to change its color and sprite there? Let me know what you think in the comments and if the majority of you guys prefer it in the inspector, I'll add it in the next update. Now let's go back into play mode and see what we got. Nice. But the collision indicator is overlapping with the colliders. That's not right. Here's where projectile scale comes in. If we select a trajectory aim game object, we can see a green circle inside of our projectile if gizmos are turned on. This is the projectile scale. If we change our projectile scale in the inspector, we can see the size of the green circle changing. Let's set it to 2 so it's the same size as our projectile. The collision indicator isn't overlapping anymore. But we have a small problem. If you're planning on aiming while your projectile is bouncing around in your game, you can see the trajectory cuts off when the projectile bounces. This is because game object colliders overlap with each other on impact. This can be solved fairly easily. If you don't want collision detection in the first place, you can turn it off altogether by turning the collision toggle off. But if you want to use collision detection, and you're planning on allowing players to aim while the projectile is bouncing around, you can get around this by decreasing the projectile scale by around 5%. Setting the projectile's collision detection to continuous in the rigid body 2D component will also help. After these two fixes, the trajectory won't cut off anymore. Collision accuracy is the number of scans used to accurately find the location of a collision. 
Keeping it on one is efficient and still accurate. If you find you need to have super accurate collision detection in your game, increasing this value will do the job. And the edit mode example velocity lets you adjust the example velocity in edit mode. Now let's look at the projectiles inspector. Sensitivity is how much velocity will be applied to the projectile while aiming. If sensitivity is low, aiming feels slow. If sensitivity is high, aiming feels fast. Max shot speed allows us to set a limit on how fast a shot can be. Minimum shot speed cancels a shot if it's performed under this speed. The trajectory line also hides when it's below the minimum shot speed. The touch radius is the area around the projectile you need to click in to start aiming. We can see it as a yellow circle if gizmos are enabled. You can also disable the touch radius if you want to be able to click anywhere to start aiming. And lastly, we have freeze on touch, which lets you slam dunk. You can also use multiple projectiles, which will work with the trajectory aim automatically. I don't want the projectiles to collide with each other. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll name it basketballs and I'll assign it to each one of the projectiles. Then I'll go to Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D, and scroll down to the Layer Collision Matrix. I'll disable Basketball with Basketball Collisions and get back into play mode. The basketballs don't collide with each other anymore, and the collision detection automatically reflects this. This is because the Trajectory Aimer 2D uses the layer collision matrix by default. If this asset was useful to you, please leave a review of what you think about it in the asset store. I'll leave a link to the asset store page in the description of this video. If this video was helpful, let me know by leaving a like. Otherwise, leave me a comment so I can know what to improve on next time. Also leave a comment if there's any features you'd like to see added in future updates. Thanks for checking out the Trajectory Aimer 2D.